Hello sewing people and welcome to my channel and cat people. Today I'm going to show you or attempt to show you how to make your own cat show curtains. Now most of the cat show curtains and I'm going to go by the east coast. So if you have a different size then uh, you will just need to calculate your size differently. But most of them on the east coast are approximately 44 inches I'm sorry, 44, that's right, 44 inches long, that's this way, by 22 inches deep, this way, and then another 22 inches high. So, first thing I like to do is figure out what I'm going to use for my lining which is the inside wire that is going to have three sides. Now right here it takes about two and a half yards to do that inside liner. So what I have right here is a two and a half yard piece. Now if you want to use this as your liner just as it is you can. You can take this two and a half yard piece of fabric and go ahead and so all your edges this way and this way all the way around the entire piece and the other side and that will give you an inside liner now that's the most expensive way now another option that you can do is uh, you can cut it right here in the very center and you can sew a different fabric to that all the way up right here where you cut it and then you have two liners you can switch it back either way and uh, have whichever liner you want okay now if you're gonna have a divider in your liner you're gonna take this two and a half yard piece fold it in half like this, doubled over and fold it in half, alright this is your center right here, that's your center, okay what you're going to do is take one piece, not, not both pieces of your lining, just one and then you're going to cut that all the way up to the middle line right there and then that's going to leave you a split and then if you have a divider in there you'll have that other piece of uh, wire that comes through there and we'll make a cover for that I can show you how to do that too later so now another thing you want to keep in mind is the way that your fabric is going to run now a piece like this it doesn't really matter which way it runs if you want it to run like this and when I say run that's the way the fabrics gonna lay out inside your cage like this is the inside of your cage so if you run the fabric this way that's how the inside of your cage is gonna look now if you run your fabric this way that's how the inside of the cage is going to look so that's what we mean by run your fabric okay so I've shown you how we would do that trim all around the sides now if you don't want to uh, there's other ways that you can do your inside liner but that's probably the easiest Now I'm going to show you another way to do your liner, inside liner. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut this fabric right here in the middle. And I'm just going to go ahead 
and cut it all the way in half. Okay, so once you have it cut in half, you're left with two long pieces, extra long pieces here. So there's two things you can do, depending on how you want to make your inside curtain. This way, you will need to go, still need to go and to hem around all your corners, and all your edges, like this. We're going to fold that so all the way around there and we're going to fold this side like this and I can show you at the machine it might be better but you can hem all around all four sides unless you want to put the divider in there Again, like I told you before, you will go ahead and you'll find your center to your fabric and do the same thing. Cut it all the way down and then you'll have two pieces. Now you can do that also if you want to gather your sides and have a piece of a gathering on the inside but that might be something we could do another day for now we're going to just get by with some uh, basic curtains how to get you to the cat show now another thing I forgot to mention was that if you do divide your liner in half or cut it in half in the two pieces like I said you're going to need to, to add at least four add about four more inches for each cut that you do you're going to have to add another inch and that's to allow for where you hem your your fabric up okay now to hem around the sides you're going to fold it over um, your, your side here you're going to fold it over a quarter of an inch and then another quarter of an inch and you can either press it with your fingers or you can pin it or you can uh, use these clips and pin it all the way around. You can go to the ironing board and press it down, whatever you want to do. Or you can just fold it as you go along, which is what I'm going to do. Now, before you get to this corner, you want to get your corner folded down ahead of time. And there's several ways you can do that corner too. Then you can come on down the corner this way and just go straight across like that or to the corner however you want to do Now something else I forgot to mention was about ironing your fabric. After I press my my uh, sew my seams, I always press mine down. Now if you're pressing your seams, even if you press your seams beforehand, you know one one way or the other you're going to press your your seams. It always makes your work look better to press it, and I forgot to mention that. 
and pressing your seams always gives you a chance to find any loose threads that need to be cut also. Okay, normally when I'm sewing, I get rid of my selvage, which is the raw end of this, the fabric here. That part, that's the selvage. I usually either cut it off, or if I know I have a good place, I can use it and hide it away, because it's not a good piece of fabric right there at the end. It has uh, holes in it, and that it's just not something you want showing in your, your work. So, anyway, I've decided on this piece, I'm going to do the two-sided inside liner. So, I'm going to sew my other piece of liner to this part right here. I'm going to cut another piece just like this purple one that we just hemmed. And I'm going to sew it right up against this selvage. Because that's going to be at the top of your curtains, and it's not going to show anyway. Okay, I'm showing you the back of the curtains, how they're going in with one side, with one half of the liner, like I told you. And that's with the raw edge. And I've used binder clips, clip them around, all the way around. And as you see, the inside there. Then when you get to the very end, you can just fold that over and clip it right there. Okay, now turning the cage around, you can see this is what you have for your liner using this method with the clips. Just plain old binder clips. These are kind of big. You don't have to have them that big. That just happens to be the size I had on hand. Okay, after you finished putting your liner in, then you and if you cut it in half, like we discussed earlier, you're going to have another piece identical to the liner, and you can take that piece and trim it on all the edges, and you'll have a top piece, just as you did, be, you know, before. And you can use that for your topper. Now, if you want to just trim a little ruffle or something around that, at the edge of it, you can do whatever you want. But if you just want to get by and have a cover, then you've got your topper. Okay, here I am sewing my ruffle to the top section, not the selvage end. I'm not doing it on the selvage end. Leaving that open for now, but I'm sewing this ruffle on the top other half that I had laid across the top of the cage a minute ago. This is my ruffle that I'm putting on. Okay, once my ruffle is sewed on, and I, I surged my edges, I uh, surged it after I sewed it on, okay, and I have surged my hem, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold over and hem all the way around, all four corners, trim the ruffle and trim the back and everything. 
of the topper. And I'll show you when I come back. Here's what your topper looks like when you get it sitting on top of the cage. Now this is on the floor. And this one, because we made such a short ruffle in the front, it's just enough room up here to cover the top. Now what you're going to do is clip it again. You'll either clip it back here at the back or clip it on the sides or whatever just clip it so it doesn't keep falling down and then depending on what breed of cat you have some of them are a little more active in the cage than others so you may have to use uh, more clips so here's where we are right now okay most fabrics are about 44 inches wide if you get into uh, some bridal fabrics and upholstery fabrics and so forth they may be a little wider than that. So you need to keep that in mind when you're selecting your fabric and purchasing. So if you're going to use a piece of fabric like this, fold it in half is not going to be long enough to cover your width of your cage. So you're going to have to get your length by cutting it straight wise. So the, the cage is going to be approximately 22 inches from front to back and then about 45 wide. So you're going to have to take your length for the inside and your skirt below all out of this piece and we're going to have to add another piece to it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, cut my piece 50 inches uh, long, a 50 inch long piece, which is going to be about 45 inches wide. So I'm going to use that for my width. And then I'm going to add a piece to it. I'm going to sew to that length of that to make it longer. You don't have to. I'll show you uh, what it's going to look like this way. If you want to leave it like this, it's perfectly fine. It's just not going to cover your table uh, all the way. I mean, it'll cover your table, not your stuff below. And I like to have a longer skirt. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here's your your table. And this table is about, oh, I'd say 26 inches. And, uh, you see right down here with this fabric cut like that it doesn't cover your stuff underneath that's going to be showing so I, I like that's for that reason I like my skirts to be longer to cover up all your stuff you're carrying with you underneath you want some of that stuff to be private so I mean you don't have to you can leave it just like this if you want and trim all your edges and you've got your your bottom skirt and you're you're good to go 
But now if you want to add something to it, you can either add a ruffle to it, uh, whatever you want to do. So I'll show you how it, how it will look together with the ruffle added. Okay, there's a skirt with the ruffle. So see what a difference that makes? Of course, I have it pulled back a little bit at the back. It would have been a little bit longer than this. But, you know, still the ruffle makes a good, big difference, I think, for the adding to the length and covering your things underneath. Okay, and there it is with the topper and all. Now, if you don't want the ruffle on there, you can either uh, just add you another piece. You know, that ruffle is approximately 18 inches long, and that's before the hems. So you can just add you a straight piece you know to it from uh, what the uh, dimensions that I gave you earlier it's up to you and uh, here it is with topper and all and uh, that's it uh, hang on to the end and I'm going to give you more dimensions and uh, I'm going to change this curtain set up a little bit I'm going to add another piece to the front, I think, because I have a ton of this fabric. But uh, anyway, if you have any questions, just comment below and ask me below, and I'll answer as best as I can. Thank you. Bye now. And I don't have the form on top that goes that you'll have at the cat shows in here. I just kind of stuck this on top of the table. So your actual curtain is going to be, you know, on top of this table you got a little more width. I do have a form. I'll, I'll set that up later. But back to speaking of directional fabrics, you can see the difference right here. One is going one way and one is going the other. And it's really not that noticeable in this particular fabric. But uh, in a lot of fabrics, it will be noticeable. So, I thought I'd bring that to your attention while I was thinking about it. Bye. Okay, here's the topper with the um, addition at the back. I added a little more width at the back so we can bring it down a little further in the front. And here's what, what a difference that makes by lengthening the top some more.